human will regret getting in our way. Some of us if we can make a shop work for AI. And yeah, we can actually, pretty easily too. This one will be more like vending machines though, and it works very similar to buyable guns, vehicles, and items from the tutorials that I've already done. But there is a good bit after that which we must set up, so it needs a whole new video to show it. So, let's get vending. Alright, for map setup we got just a little bit. Uh, we will only be focusing on this area, because these are just duplicates that I will show you how to modulate to make uh, work for other AI types. But for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to set this one up right here. And for map setup, you're going to need a button. Make sure that the settings are all set up so that way you can use this button multiple times. So one time use is off, initially empowered and initially disabled are both off. And then you're going to want to name it something more than likely the name of the AI you're going to be buying. So I named this one Hunter button because it will be a Hunter banished. And it's going to cost 2,000 points. And you're going to need a place for them to be dispensed to. There's technically a way if you're only using one team or, you know, or other ways to make them be teleported to the player instead and like to an offset like you buy it here and it can pop up right here beside you if you want but there's really no need for that um, if especially if it messes things up or whatever and gets gummed up because like the positioning is weird like you're turned a certain way so we're gonna have it set up to where they will dispense right here just like in the vehicle tutorial they will come out right here and that's all you have to do you're gonna want to name this uh, something I'm gonna name it dispense just like my other video with the the viable vehicles and then lastly you're going to need to go down here and make sure you have a dummy spawn for your spawners for when you the AI spawn on those teams uh, and then you're gonna want them this uh, pointer right here it's gonna be called barracks it's a you're gonna want to make sure it's a boundary so go down here to uh, gameplay boundary make sure it's a box mm, anything big enough as long as it encompasses all of your AI uh, is fine. You can make sure the bottom extends to the floor a little bit because we're going to be checking to make sure that only AI get picked up by it anyway. So it's okay for the rest. And then you're going to need your AI spawner, which we can. I will go ahead and set this one up for you. These others, like I said, these are all just duplicated for the other AI that I have. And once we get this set up, you'll see that it works for all of these as well. We're going to name this one Hunter T1. Because it's going to be the Team 1 Hunter. Because we're doing this for multiple teams, right? Okay. So we're going to bring this down. Hunters are the biggest unit as well, for the most part. At least the widest unit. So we can use this as a basis. And as long as a Hunter can fit in all our stuff, then so can the other AI. Team, we're going to set this to Team 1 Eagle. Obviously, we're going to have this one set to a Hunter Banished. And then this face forwards on trigger by script is on and the squad label since i have uh, ai in my map currently that use alpha bravo and some we're actually going to use it towards the end uh we're going to have x-ray as team one and then ai move zone i'm actually going to assign one here because you can do this and then as soon as they spawn and teleport up here they will start moving to that move zone so that's what i have that for and so that way if you uh when you buy them they will come out of the dispenser and immediately start marching toward their intended move zones so we can duplicate this since it has the settings we want. And all we need to do is change the team to Team 2 Cobra. And the squad, we're going to change that to Yankee. And that's it. It's all we have to do down here. Just make sure you name this something like Barracks or something that you'll remember as the area monitor that your AI will spawn in. Oh, one last thing, actually. We're not done just yet. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this. Uh, go to squad behaviors and set it to inactive so that way they don't run off the edge or something there we go and of course I'm, I'm sure it goes without saying you're gonna want a nav seed down here to put a nav mesh so that they actually can spawn in the first place just like plenty of my previous tutorials explain but just uh, just running over it just in case you haven't seen them and all this stuff is for looks the the vending machine looking stuff here i made it that way because it's just for looks you don't have to do any of this you don't even i have it set to where an ai will spawn back here that won't do anything uh unrelated to all teams and squads so that way you can see what you're buying that's pretty much all that is so with that out of the way all we have left to do is to start scripting and it's not long but it, it there's some things you'll want to pay attention to so what we're going to need to pull into our node graph is our area monitor our two new spawners for one for each team our button to activate it and then of course our teleporter 
You'll see that I already have stuff over here, but that's unrelated to the tutorial, and I'll explain at the end why I even have it there, because it connects at the end of my script. Okay, so we're going to use Hunter button right here. Oh, I'm going to tackle this real quick. Hunter T1. 1 is supposed to be Hunter T2. Okay, there we go. I'm going a little quick, so I feel like I'm, you know, I need to slow down before I forget something. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Events Custom. And on Object Interact, you go ahead and place it up here. Connect our Hunter button to the object that it's interacted with. And just like the start of my other tutorials, we're pretty much going to go the same route, at least for the first few nodes, on getting the... Uh, um, point amount and stuff the required price and if he if they have enough and all that good stuff so go ahead and grab a get personal score from game mode setting or game mode tab then we're going to go down here to compare logic compare very first node compare plug that in here get the total score plug that into operand a operand b is how much the uh, item you're wanting to buy costs and what you'll see here is i typed in 2000 but it will only go to 1,000. You cannot go any higher. Well, what do you do if you have something that costs more than 1,000? Well, that's pretty easy. All you need to do is grab an add node. Go ahead and plug the result into Operand B. And now you can add 1,000 plus 1,000. And let's say you have something that costs 3,000. Just add another one back here and plug that result in here. And now it's gonna say, Okay, A plus B equals 2,000, uh, and then it's saying, okay, 2,000 plus 1,000 is 3,000, and so on. So that's all you have to do there. Now, lastly, we're going to grab a Boolean logic from the logic tab, very first one. Plug it down here, so that way we can make sure that we have equal to or greater than enough points to, uh, to get this item. There you go. And now we're going to go ahead and grab a branch from the same tab. Plug it in at the top here. There you go. And the condition is or. So that's way it's equal to or greater than. Because if you don't have enough points, which is the only other possibility, it's not set up, so it will not do anything. And you won't get the item. Next, we're going to go to Players tab. This is where things start to differentiate from the others because of the way AI work. Uh, we're going to get Player Team. Go ahead and plug this down here. Grab the player and plug it into the activating player of the Switch. And then we're going to go to Logic Compare and Compare Teams. Go ahead and place it right here. Team A is the team of the player who activated the switch. And we're going to see, hey, are they on Team 1? We're not going to hook up another branch yet, but we're going to go ahead and place it. Because it's going to go right here. There's one thing we need to do right here in the middle, and that is involving our points. We need to get rid of the points. We need to spend those points somehow. So if they have enough points which is if true, then we're going to adjust our points. The player whose points are going to get adjusted is the one who bought the AI. And the score adjustment you're going to notice is the exact same way. We can't negative 2,000 it. So we're going to have to repeat the process here by adding an add node. And the only difference we're going to have to do here, is so we go ahead and plug the score adjustment into the result, we're going to add a negative sign. So we're going to do negative 1,000 plus negative 1,000. And that will get you the negative 2,000 that you need. Go ahead and plug that into that branch, and we're good. The condition of that new branch is, are they on the same team as Eagle? And if they are, then we're going to do something. And then if they're not, we're also going to do something. But we're going to do two different things, though very similar, based on whether they are on that team or not. So go ahead and grab a Trigger AI Spawner twice. So that way we can plug if true into this one and if false into this one. And there's where we're going to use our Hunter T1 and Hunter T2 spawners. Go ahead and plug T1 up here and place T2 right here. Because if they are on Team 1, which is Eagle, Hunter Team 1 will spawn. If they're on Team 2, because they're not on Team 1, Hunter Team 2 will spawn. And that's it for this one. And let's say you have more than two teams, for example. You would just do this and then use a branch here. And instead of doing this, you would plug this in here and the condition here, and then use the if true, and then do your third team here the same way you would have with this one. Or if you have even more teams, just repeat the process. So you don't have to worry about all that. There you go. Just like that. Now we're gonna go to the second part of the script, which is a different event. And this is how we're going to get the, uh, get the AI to come to you or go to the dispense. We're gonna to go to events 
just basic an on object entered area which means we're going to need to go to variables basic and grab an area monitor go ahead and plug that in here the area monitor object is going to be our barracks which is the zone down there by all our dummy spawners we're going to check is it an ai because we want to make sure that's that's what it is we don't want to pick up the ground or pick up something random that might just so happen to fly by down there and we're going to get a branch and just make sure you don't have to do this if you're confident that no items or objects or anything will go down there but uh, just in case if you want this is a fail safe to prevent that from happening it's only two nodes and it doesn't hurt much now we're going to use the same tab for each object go ahead and plug the if true into here and what we're going to do the list of objects we're going to grab is all of them in the area monitor so just like my vehicles tutorial uh, how to buy them we're going to be checking all of the AI in this area and then of course if you watch the tutorial you know where we're going with this we're going to be comparing the character type we're gonna be comparing the AI to or the one we have set we're gonna compare the ones in there to the one we have set and if it matches it will teleport the one that matches so we're gonna grab compare character type from logic compare then we're going to grab from AI advanced get AI character type because now we're going to plug AI unit into the current object. So it's going to go through all the objects that are down there. And if one matches, then it will work. And if none match, nothing will happen. And then the character B, you're going to want to set that to the one that you want to buy. So we're going to try to get a hunter banished, right? So that's what we're going to set character B to. And we're going to make sure that they are the same character type. So duplicate this branch, put it right here. Plug in execute per object to it. And then the condition is are the same character type. If they are, and that's what we want, because if they're not, nothing's going to happen. If they are, we're going to grab a, a node called teleport unit. Go ahead and plug that into if true. And the unit that's going to be teleported is the one that matches. As long as it matches, it's going to go through each object in the list. And as long as it finds one that matches, it will do this. The position. That's where we're going to use our dispense. Go ahead and plug it right here. We need to go to objects transform and grab a get object position there we go plug in the position to the position here and then the object's position we're going to be sending it to is our dispensary pointer and of course if they have a vehicle if you found a way to get a vehicle uh in the machine and you want it to work that way you can set this to true but i'm not so i'm going to set it to false and the last node we need to make this all work is in a v uh, ai modifiers yeah and you're going to want to go to set AI unit inactive. Go ahead and plug that in here. And then the AI unit obviously is the same one that got teleported. We're going to make sure that is inactive and set to false. That way it is active. And that's it. That's all you got to do. That is your script. That will get you your first viable AI. And it's for multiple teams as well. So you don't got to worry about that. But I'm going to show you this thing at the end here. All this is... This really is just my effect. This is just my effect right up here to show you that... Oh, wrong room. You did not see that yet. Anyway, uh, right here. This my, that my effect, it does this only. It seems like it's doing it over and over again because I'm in editor mode, obviously. But if I'm in play mode, it won't do this. It will only activate this effect when an AI spawns. So we can go ahead and test it out. It should work pretty flawlessly. Uh, let's see. I, I've got it set to when I crouch that it will show my points amount. And we have just enough to buy him. Can I buy him? Yes, I can. And he was set to active. He's acting a little funny because these are not set to a team. And he can kind of tell that they're there. So they will kind of act funny at first. And, and whatever, the hunter's going to move real slow just because he knows there's danger nearby. But you don't have to worry about that because once he gets out of range of them, he will go a lot faster. But now we have no points. Can we buy them? No, we can't. Can't even buy other guys. I have a button over here that gives me a thousand points per time I use it. So now I have 2,000 again. Can we buy them again? Yes, we can. What happens to the other one? He's actually still up there. So you can buy as many of an AI up to the limit of AI in the map. So you don't have to worry about that as long as you got the points and the limit hasn't been reached. You can buy as many as you want of any kind on the map as long as you have the points now if I switch teams they're definitely going to try to kill me uh, but one thing is points stay 
or points stay on the team. So if you switch teams, your points will be the same amount of points. Oh yeah, they're definitely not gonna like me. Okay, anyway. Uh, see, I have uh, 250, even though I definitely didn't have that a minute ago. Let's go ahead and activate this twice. And let's see, will they... Those aren't on my team, but it's this one. This one is on my team. And then he will end up fighting those guys up there because they're on two different teams. So there you go. That's how you get it set up for multiple teams. And uh, like I said, here's the part to explain uh, the duplication here. All you have to do is duplicate the script brain. And see, let's say I duplicated this one. All you would have to do is pull in your new button, which mine would be the elite button right here. Change your numbers right here. Change your spawners to be the right ones. Elite T1, Elite T2. And then lastly, change your character type to whatever AI you have. And ta-da, completely same thing. And just repeat the process for every AI you have. And you will have zero issue with it. And there you go. You have AI vending machines that could be used for both teams. So now if you have the right change, you can use those hard-earned war funds to make an army. It goes without saying, but you can also make different teleport locations for the separate teams, as well as having two different spots set up for each team to buy them. It's a really modular process that is going to make a lot of maps more lifelike. Okay, so here's the serious bit. I'm not going to lie to you guys, the tutorials may slow down soon, not because I don't have time or because I can't do them, but because, let's face it, I've done so many topics now that we are running out of things to cover. I'm kind of out of ideas on my end on what to teach from things that I come up with on my own, and frankly, most of the tutorials here already come from you guys anyway, which is great. There's always going to be something, but to cover something every single day is getting a bit harder. Requests are helping alleviate this, but we are starting to get into the territory of a lot of requests being something technically already covered, or things that just aren't possible, such as, hey, can we script the AI to be able to play as them? So soon there may not be a tutorial every single day. Only once a request that can be made into one comes up will we probably do one. That doesn't mean less content. As I've said in previous videos, I'm going to be adding different content as we go, as to grow a larger audience and bring in more of the Halo fanbase. I hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for sticking around for all of these tutorials. I'll see you on the next one. Well, you ready to go, Marxist? Yes, let's be on our way.